You are listening to The Emulsion Podcast, a show that informs and inspires the restaurant industry to work, live, and create better. My name is Justin Kana. I'm a chef and media producer with almost 10 years of experience in award-winning restaurants all over the world. I created this show as a way to give back, to inspire the next generation, and help you progress your career. The Emulsion Podcast is sponsored by you folks, and Patreon is where that happens. If you're here as a return listener and enjoy the episode you just came from and happen to want to support more episodes, visit patreon.com slash Justin Kana. I'd really appreciate it if you can. I totally understand if you can't. Free ways you can support this show include leaving a like or comment on this episode, filling up all five stars on iTunes so more people can find us, or simply sharing an episode with a friend. This is an interview episode. If you missed out on asking your burning question to today's guest, that's probably because you aren't following me on Instagram or Twitter. I use the handy dandy question feature in my Instagram stories, and I also start a thread for each guest on Twitter. So between the two of those, that's the best way to take advantage of the access I hope to bring you with this show and all of the interviews I do. Let's learn a little bit more about today's interviewee, shall we? Yeah, funny thing about, <laughs> yeah, I, I got made fun of when I was doing that and doing pop-ups mm-hmm. when I first moved here, mm-hmm. and all those chefs are doing pop-ups now, Yeah, which is funny. That's interesting. And they're using all the hashtags now. Totally, totally. So I guess it doesn't matter. What is up, folks? My name is Justin Kana. Welcome to another episode of The Emulsion. This is episode number 75, and my guest today that I was so fortunate to interview was Matt. Matt Broussard, also known as a cook named Matt across all the channels on the internet. I'm reading this from a blurb here. Quote, a graduate of Austin's Le Cordon Bleu, Broussard has cooked his way around Austin, San Antonio, and South Padre Island by the time he landed at Palace Kitchen. Since moving to Seattle in 2014, the line cook has hosted nearly 40 pop-up events and dreams to one day open his own multimedia kitchen studio, melding his love for cooking with video end quote. The authors for that blurb, the guys over at Zagat when they awarded Matt one of their 30 under 30 awards in 2016. Upon moving to Seattle, Matt and I became friends. We haven't done a pop-up together yet, but we talk about it all the time. This is our first real collaboration on the camera, on the internet, and I wanted to interview him. I wanted to talk about what he's been up to. We chat about advice for doing pop-ups of your own. His recent stint in LA that was very short. Uh, He moved from Seattle to LA and then came back to Seattle, how his Syrian and Filipino influences weave their way into his Mexican-inspired food, growing up being inspired by music, being a chef and a YouTuber at the same time, and so much more. Just a little disclaimer, there's a couple of times in the interview where we say her or she, that is referring to Matt's girlfriend. She was behind the scenes recording video for his own channel freaking YouTubers. So that's that. I just wanted to avoid any confusion. So here is my conversation with Matt Broussard. Is there anything that you're like, I really love this guy's YouTube channel, or I really like this way of doing a dinner, or mm-hmm. is there anything that's that's like in your in your head right now that in, what is it, June of 2018? Well, I mean, currently we're doing what we're going to call like Mexican dim sum, because we just recently went to like Dominic Ansel's spot when we were in Beverly Hills. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you know no. who Dominic Ansel is. I know, I know of his stuff, but the, the only frame of reference I have for him is his bakery in New York. Yeah, well, he has like really cool <clears throat> shit, like the the cookie cup with yep. the milk, and he does like yep. all these like really um, fancy desserts, sure. like the s'mores ice cream. That was really cool. It's like a like you've seen the pop that's like mm-hmm. ice cream with the marshmallow on the yep. outside. Yep. Okay, yep. so he does all that stuff and the cronut, of course. Sure. Anyways, we went there for dinner, and. They, no, I wanted to take her for the dim sum, but they weren't doing it. I had gone before, actually. But the the way they do their brunch, I really liked. It's like dim sum style. Mm-hmm. They have their wait staff like walking around with these platters, like these stop platters with like all the stuff. And they're just walking around. They ask you if you want this, like you want some focaccia with shallots, sure. or oh, you want the salmon, you want and the cronut. And it has prices on the thing? Like on, or you just So you with- have a dim sum card. Totally. And they, when they put it on your platter on your table, you have a platter on your table as well. They just set it down, mm-hmm. they stamp your card with how much you got. Got it. And they walk away. Mm-hmm. People keep coming. They mm-hmm. have like a uh, bar cart coming around. With it's, drinks. Yeah, like they'll make your cocktail right there. It's really cool. So mm-hmm. I like that setup for a pop up dinner. I think that could make it very efficient. Mm-hmm. You know, we could just put stuff out on these platters and people mm-hmm. will walk around and essentially it'll go. There was another restaurant quicker. in San Francisco called State Bird Provisions. Have you heard of that one? Uh, yeah, actually, 
Did you ever eat there? I got offered a job there before we moved here. Yeah, I yeah, didn't yeah. Go. They just opened in LA. Interesting. They have them in Vegas, Miami. Like, mm. Yeah, I got offered by the chef's role guy. Interesting. Um, no, we went to Redbird. Okay. That one was really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was dope. But that was the first place that I ever encountered. They were doing like modern Californian, but same style with dim sum. Mm -hmm. where, but they were where they would roll a cart around, but it would be like, here's like donuts with foie gras mousse or like here's pickled fish with, you know, whatever. But it was like all California ingredients, but yeah. that same style of service. And it just like blew everyone's mind, which is weird yeah. because dim sum has been happening for ages. Yeah. So that's what you guys are going to do in that space? Yeah, that's what we're going to do in that space. We're going to try it out, see how it goes. And also, obviously, like what I told you, it's kind of sketched. So we yeah, might yeah. change it over. Maybe, maybe not. Um, we're are... working with, um, I don't know if you know Michelle no. at Pike Place Market, this Italian woman. She yeah, just yeah, yeah. You space introduced above. me to her. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I remember. We're going to try some stuff out with her Dope. at her space. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do some pasta pop ups. That'll be fun. And. Um, also, the chef of writer wants Got us it. there too. So we, there's spaces. Sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what um, is there any kind of like in your head, having done pop-ups before? Do you see any like logistical challenges with doing that dim sum style service? Because normally with a pop-up, right, like you know what everyone's eating. I see it easier actually because we actually did this type of thing. It's basically cocktail, right? We basically we did that in Nashville like three weeks ago mm -hmm. um, for like eighty people. Got it was just it. her and I. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. 80 people. Right. And it was smooth. Like, we just put all the stuff out onto the platters. They picked it up, take it, and that's it. Pass it out. Okay. It's easy. That's why I like it mm -hmm. as well, because everything could be fresh. Like, you're just putting it out and it's going, you know, it's just, it's well, smooth. What's the number of tickets you're doing at this one? So, like I said. It's <laughs> yeah, like, you don't know. Yeah, like <laughs> they, the way they put it was kind of weird. Like, mm -hmm. For each day, like Sunday, Monday, it says like 7 p.m., 7.30, 8, 8. Oh, because it's through talk, right? It's kind of weird, yeah. Interesting. So we'll see how that goes. I think so far we're at 25. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. That's a good number, though. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. it, it'll be fun. Mm -hmm. Especially for like the first couple, you don't really have to. Um, yeah, I mean. It's better to test, because, I mean, have you cooked in that space before, though? I've never even seen it. Mm -hmm. That's usually how it goes for me with pop-ups. Totally, ups. totally. I just, you just gotta make it, make it happen. Yeah. Um, Doing another Marcus one. Oh yeah. yeah, when? Here? Uh, no, in New York okay. again. Okay, uh, Planning on doing it in August or September. Mm -hmm. Logistics with him is crazy, because... Is like it gonna be at plan. Red Rooster? Yeah, it's gonna be in Harlem, Red Got Rooster, it. in the space below it called Little Guineas. Okay, mm -hmm. that's cool. Um, same shtick where you guys collaborate on yeah, the Yeah, same deal. Okay. Um, I want to collaborate more with the chefs of the spot too because I really like them. Mm -hmm. They're really good chefs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you find that it's easier to do pop-ups here in Seattle or be a traveling, you know, like he's, like the response from people? Mm. I find it easier. Oh, the response? Well, like as in like selling tickets? Maybe or? both. Maybe you can answer both questions. Whether it's like the response from the diner because I think in New York personally that uh -huh. they're a little more receptive to the pop-up scene as opposed to Seattle. And of course, if you're mm. traveling there, they probably take care of the tickets and stuff. But if you do one here, you are a little bit more responsible. You know, no? dude, here it's kind of weird with ticket sales <laughs> <laughs> compared to everywhere else. Sure, sure. Um, <clears throat> yeah, like here ticket sales are like a hit or miss. Mm -hmm. uh, like the last one we did at Carlisle, I did with Byron. It was like five tickets sold. We're oh, like, this is, we probably shouldn't yeah, be doing this, right? Yeah. Then on the day of, it sold out. So with Seattle pop-ups, it's kind of a pain in the ass to set mm -hmm. them up smoothly because it's like, I don't know what my count is. I don't know how much shit I should have prepped with New York or Nashville, wherever. Yeah, yeah, Miami, wherever. It's usually a set <clears throat> thing because mm -hmm. it's like you're going way over there to set it up. Sure. So it's usually a set thing. Uh, diners, they're all usually really enthused mm -hmm. everywhere. They're usually like followers or whatever, so they're always happy to like. In real life. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. That, that's cool. Sure. Um, interesting, you know, challenges every time and different things to do. Like when Marcus put me on the spot and handed me a freaking microphone, and I, oh, I was no, like, you gotta talk. Yeah. So you know, it's always like something different. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I I think I prefer. 
I guess you would call it off-site, mm -hmm. off the city. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Because more things are taken care of, right? Yeah. And so also because like I have somewhere to cook the stuff. Like here, it's sometimes where do I cook the stuff? Sure. Like, yeah. do I do it on site or can I prep yeah, it before? Yeah, exactly. When when the pop up is like in full swing and everything's happening, mm -hmm. where do you prefer to be? Do you like to be cooking plating? Do you like to be plating and having someone else doing the cooking? Do you like to be in the dining room talking to people? Like, mm -hmm. where, so in, that's, in, a, in a perfect world, in the the in a perfect world, usually, actually, what I always do is I cook it, plate it, and I take it out myself. Got it, got Even it. Even if I have wait staff, mm -hmm. I will take plates myself and I will talk to everybody. I will literally go to every person and talk to each and every person. Totally. Because that's just the way I like to do it. Mm -hmm. It's not like a restaurant. They're coming and, you know, buying a ticket and they want to meet you and all sure. this stuff. Sure, sure. Yeah. What, do you find that that kind of hinders some elements? Because I've certainly have had experiences at pop-ups where of course you want to be doing all that, yeah. but there are some times when it's like, you don't want to make it a three hour meal, right? Yeah. So you kind of have to like, you have to pick and choose what you're doing at certain points in the time. Mm -hmm. What would you be f willing to first give up? Like if it had to be one of those things, hmm. like, would you bring in a service person? Would you bring in an extra cook to help you? Like, that's the, that's the thing. I usually have a lot of help, which I'm very fortunate sure. for. Like with Marcus, mm -hmm. there was all those cooks to right. continue it on mm -hmm. while I go speak Talk to people. To people. And right. So I think I would sacrifice that, the mm -hmm. cooking part, mm -hmm. because, you know, I could still develop a menu and show them what's going on because, you know, right. still want to go make an impression. Because then it's still your food. You can still tell the story. Right. Yeah. And be the, I mean, be the face of it, I guess, yeah. is what it... I don't like doing pop-ups at a closed kitchens interesting yeah it has to more be like open. an open mm -hmm. kitchen because it makes it more involved mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. exactly um flipping it on to to mm -hmm. travel yeah when you um you just moved back yeah from la yeah like which was a very short a month ago it was yeah, very yeah. short yeah we moved in january and just moved back like a month ago yeah yeah it only lasts like five months um was not happy to be back very happy to be back it's good i mean the entire time was just thinking of moving out right right yeah yeah when we came to do the pop-up at the carlisle i was just thinking how you know much better it is over here mm -hmm. so is it the product is it the you just um, to LA? see because i've never been i still have yet to go to la you've never been to la uh, you're not really missing much. Really? It's like a giant suburb to me because mm -hmm. I grew up in that type of like southern border area. Sure. It's like it takes an hour to drive to <laughs> Anywhere. each borough. Right, right. And not, all, I mean, not only that, but the traffic. Mm -hmm. So it takes even longer it's to drive crazy. to each borough. She was driving so much. <laughs> like, it was like a pain in the ass. And also the area we were in was not that ideal. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, just overall. Because you were outside of the city, right? Yeah, we were, like, where, where uh, Byron, the guy I was working with, he lived, like, in Canyon Country, which was farther north where we lived. So we lived way out there. I mean, also, I mean, just, it's not the city for me. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't really, like, hop on a train and get right. somewhere quick or... There's no other option. You're I mean, gonna you're be just like here, right? Like, you just walk here. Or you can yeah, like, you're going to be in traffic. Yeah. Like, here, we took an Uber that took... Two minutes. Yep, two minutes. Because we want to get there. here right on time. And, yeah, and it's... Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, you can't do that over there. Mm -hmm. If you can, it's... I mean, we got to the airport in 45 minutes once, but that's because we left at 4 in the morning, mm -hmm. and still there was fucking traffic. I mean... So, like, the day-to-day -day sucked, but was there any, like, restaurants or any, like, food experiences that you had that were, like, in any way, shape, or form better than Seattle? Well, what I liked about it is... Um, it wasn't exactly like where I'm from, but mm -hmm. I missed like that southern aspect sure. of food. Mm -hmm. So I was excited to, you know, dig into that. Speaking All the good like pupusas mm -hmm. and the taquerias everywhere and just the ingredients that you could find at the stores are also good, like Mexican stores everywhere. So I like that part. Mm -hmm. um, you don't find that here. Right. I feel like up here is more of an Asian influence. Totally. Which I mean, that's just, a, I didn't that's history, with, right? So right. I'm learning a lot here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I was going to wait until later in this show, but we're on it now. I was going to ask a little bit about that kind of 
heritage for you and how your family plays into the way that you're thinking about your food mm -hmm. now and how it's kind of like developed in your career yeah um, i mean it's more of the culture of the area i grew up in because uh, my family is like a whole mix I had a, my grandma I grew up with, she's like Syrian, so she grew up with different food. Like I grew up with stuff, grape leaves, yep. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But in a town where the norm is tacos and yep. tamales and stuff. So sure. I was growing up with stuff like that. And um, some of my friends, they would try that and they're like, what the hell is that? <laughs> this is so good. So, you know, I still have friends to this day that I would like go and get those grape leaves from my grandma because... It's just, you know, it's different. So I grew up with the mentality of, like, I know all these different foods, even though I didn't really. Because, you know, the town I grew up in, it was just, like, one thing. So that got me excited about it, and that led to me wanting to keep cooking and go to culinary school and do all that stuff. And So you would you cook with her, or were you just kind of, like, you enjoyed eating it? Did you ever get to it? So, cause that's no, I enjoyed of, eating it, so I started cooking with her. Got it. Yeah. Cause that's my like my biggest regret with my Indian grandma mm -hmm. is she passed away when I was eleven and I oh, never man. had that chance to cook with her. Mm -hmm. um, but so keep keep going on that. So your grandma was Syrian. Uh, yeah, she's Syrian, but I mean she was born in California, so she doesn't. So have, her parents like, whole, were Syrian first generation. Yeah, and she was born in my great grandma was mm -hmm. born in New Jersey, so okay. they're like yeah, Americanized, yeah, yeah, but yeah, they yeah. have uh -huh. the the Syrian background. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's what and she also be. as a kid would go to Chile a lot because she was born in Chile but mm -hmm. as a baby she yep. would go there a lot so I mean there's that mm -hmm. I had a great grandpa that had a restaurant over there um, never met him my other great grandpa was Filipino okay so there's a lot of different things yeah so but so that Mexican element strictly comes from the environment that you grew exactly up in. yeah interesting mm -hmm. I didn't know that I yeah. thought that it was a cultural family thing but it's it's not, part of that. Part, yeah, I mean, sure, sure. Yeah. Grew, yeah, but I'm. But what I was thinking was like there was a, there's um, like a grandfather or a from Mexico somewhere. Hmm. I didn't grow up with that. Interesting. Yeah. So how are you exploring that now? I grew up with that in my later years. I would say. Got it. You know, grandpa figures, I guess. Mm -hmm. yeah. How are you? Did your did your parents cook, or was most of that most of those food memories from your? Oh yeah, my mother always cooked. Mm -hmm. um, my grandma as well. Got it. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. And how are you finding that you're taking the experience that you have from the restaurant and applying it <laughs> and applying it to food that you're excited about, or is that something that you're interested in sharing? Uh, like those stories with mm. with people at pop-ups like what what does I it feel like you? in the beginning that's what I really did like I kind of recreated stuff I grew up with mm -hmm. but now it's just more about just making good food sure I guess an essence of that mm -hmm. kind of comes out like mm -hmm. the pozole soup dumpling we're doing God. random shit that like that but good. yeah mm -hmm. I guess you could say that okay I kind of do it without knowing mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, because that's what speaks to you, right? It's yeah. like that. You can't, I don't know, I tell people all the time. I mean, it's like the chef I had at Palace. He was from upstate New York, right? So you kind of have a feeling about what that is. So sure. you would have like, you know, sort of trashy foods like... Uh, like rinse, white rinse, trash rinse, food? Yeah, like freaking, we had like dishes that were like... Um, a burger tartare that had like the spray can cheese yep. that we made ourselves and, you know stuff like that yeah, yeah, yeah. which was delicious mm -hmm. you know but i guess we all do it without knowing it's just like sure. comfort food to us mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. going back to your childhood is there anything else that was kind of like when you were like taking take it back for yourself when you were like 13 14 is there anything that you were like into specifically um, that was not food, whether it's, and it can be as weird or mm -hmm. eccentric as you yeah, want. Yeah, it was but. always music. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. It was always music. Playing or? Yeah, lifting as well. Okay. All that stuff. What did you play? Saxophone. And then when I moved, I got into guitar. Mm -hmm. So I just always did that. As kind of like part of school or did you, you and your friends have a band or what? It started as school. Mm -hmm. And then, I mean, after high school, I played with friends. I lived with the band in Austin. Interesting. So that was fun. A lot of jam when was sessions. That? that was when I was like 18, 19. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And 
do you find that that has an influence on like how you got into f- the food culture at all or uh, how you started in kitchens? Yeah, because I feel like uh, the musicians sort of have the same lifestyle as us. I always wanted to be a musician, so, but I don't have a musicianal ear. Like I can't. Do you I can't. Play anything? Well, I I played trumpet growing up, oh, okay. and I almost I, I almost that. played drums, but I didn't. Yeah. Uh, but that was like my big dream was to be a musician. Yeah. But I I didn't have an ear for it, and I didn't. I don't know. There was just something Were about you it. Were jazz did. or anything? I did jazz. Yeah? I did jazz trumpet. You just, and you say you didn't have an ear for it. It's just, I couldn't get it to the point, like, I could do this, I could do the basics, right? Like, mm-hmm. I could do the scales, I mm-hmm. could play in, like, a big symphonic orchestra, mm-hmm. but it, when it came to, like, get up on stage and do improv in the key of blank, yeah. I couldn't think of, really? I, I couldn't. Like you could tell me like we're playing in C sharp, yeah. C sharp, or yeah, yeah. like B major, or whatever. I don't know what that is. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. It's just it didn't hit. It didn't click like that. Yeah. But for some reason, now I can do it with food. Do you know what I mean? I got like, you. I can sit down and we can, you know, walk through the farmers market here, and I can write a menu. Yeah. But you to have me, like it's like the same the skills. Yeah, 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 like it's the same skill. I'd right? say it's the same thing. Like with the music. Um, like when they say a C sharp, I can remember that sound. I can't. It's just like remembering like what a fucking tarragon tastes yep, like. Yep, whatever. Yep. Like it's exactly right. Um, but yeah, I mean, I didn't really have that either. I mainly was a sound person mm-hmm, all my mm-hmm. year. Do you still play anything? Um, it's probably been a while. <laughs> I would like I mean, to get back into it. That could be a cool pop it. up. Yeah. Like music plus. I have a friend who does some weird fusion style pop ups like that. Um, uh, yeah, my friend Tariq does that. Calls it a DJ and a cook. Interesting. It's pretty cool. Does he do both? No, no, he has he a friend that DJs. It's, it's at the Midnight Mecca. Sure. It's pretty cool. Um, I'm trying so to figure I'm gonna out. do something with them soon, with him and uh, this guy named Molly. Okay. So, I'm gonna do some pop-ups. Oh, Molly. Yeah. Yeah, I know that guy. That's cool. Yeah, he's rad. Switching it up, I want to talk a little bit about like media where it is now, because you and I are both. Mm-hmm. doing YouTube and Instagram and I obviously have the podcast but yeah where did that come into your life and where did you kind of like decide that you were going to start pursuing that because there isn't a lot of us that the cooking and media production kind of people yeah it came in when I moved here mm-hmm. um, which was when I was 2014 okay yeah like early 2014 mm-hmm. um, when I moved here I just wanted to start sharing it with friends, family, and then it became like a thing where I got into it, you know, taking the pictures and got a camera, mm-hmm. and made it nicer. And sure. Was got this attention? I liked it, so I just kept doing it. Was this food that you were making back at your apartment or at the restaurant or like where? Both. 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 Mm-hmm. Um, I had my first pop up dinner like the first week of moving here. Okay. That was a crazy experience. <laughs> <laughs> it was like at some like five million dollar mansion yep. on Madison Beach. Sure. That was rad. And the the goal was to, like you said, just share it out there. Yeah. It was that was the goal. Just to share it. Mm-hmm. And I just stove into it. Yeah. What fueled it more? Was it like wanting to um like wanting to build a business out of it or is there someone that you saw where you're like he's really he or she's really smart I want to try that I want to you know like hmm I always watched YouTubers in high school mm-hmm. but they weren't food related really what I were mean some the only food out? related I, I saw which I wouldn't really consider is uh, like Rosanna Pansino interesting I watched her like since the beginning <laughs> me and my mom because she loves baking mm-hmm. she makes money off her cakes sure. anyways um Watched her a lot. I watched a lot of fitness YouTubers. Yep. That's what we, me and my buddy, yep. usually did. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, I guess seeing the attention I was getting, I thought maybe I could pursue this. And so that led to wanting what, to improve it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah. where is it at with you now? Like Instagram versus YouTube versus any other platforms that you're excited about? Is there kind of like, what has mm. it turned into for you? Uh, it's just turned into just a normal thing for me, I guess. Mm-hmm. It's like, I don't really have to it's think a part about of your, it. It's it's some, a, yeah, it's like a part of, of who you, yeah. my day to day. Like, I, mm-hmm. yeah, I don't really think about it anymore, I guess. And before I used to have to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you have any advice for anyone that's kind of like on the edge of wanting to start sharing that kind of stuff? That's where it's like, 
I mean, because you know how it can be in the in a kitchen where you're like, yeah, whip out your phone or I mean, worst thing, I, I got made fun of when I was at Per Se and I brought my camera in one day. You know what I mean? Yeah, funny thing about <laughs> yeah, I I got made fun of when I was doing that and doing pop ups mm -hmm. when I first moved here, mm -hmm. and all those chefs are doing pop ups now. Yeah, which is funny. That's interesting. And they're using all the hashtags now. Totally, totally. So I guess it doesn't matter. Um, Plays itself out. But I, I guess I would say you just do it. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a lot of cooks I've already met recently that they like see me doing this and they're like, oh, I I want to do that, but I just like need to plan it out and all this stuff, and I just. You can't do that. You have to just do it. Mm -hmm. That's it. You just have to start. Yeah. Um, like there was a cook I met at one of the restaurants I worked at, uh, Cantina. He was saying he wanted to start like um, a Twitch, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because he loves video games mm -hmm. and playing uh, freaking Fortnite. What's it fucking called pinball. Oh, interesting. So he's like, yeah, dude, I want to like record that and put that up and. He's like thinking of the strategy on it and I'm like, no, dude, just fucking go do what you do every night and play mm -hmm. the pinball and record it and play it up. You know, yeah. you just have Press to record. do it. Yeah. Know? That's mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. So I guess I would just say do it. Yeah. You know, because as you progress, you kind of figure out the ways you like to do things. Mm -hmm. Just like right now, I'm trying to figure out the ways I like to do video on YouTube. I already have the photo thing figured out. Mm -hmm. Now it's just the video thing I'm figuring out. There's more to it. You know, like sound. Sure. Yeah. It's like, do I do a, like a video with just kitchen sounds or do I do something where I can talk over it mm -hmm. or do I just do something where I talk straight to the camera and edit it in? It's just like, there's so many ways to go about it. And then like, there's different softwares and mm -hmm. what lens do I use for what angle? What are some resources that you're currently using to kind of help that? Um, my job. Got it. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you saw anything recently, like I've been just doing stuff at my, my yep, work. Yep, yep, I'm just utilizing that right now. And that trial and error is the resource. Yeah, so More basically so than... I'll just set the camera down as I'm working mm -hmm. and record that. Got it. Different angles, mm -hmm. record a recipe while I'm at work. Sure. So I'm just kind of doing that, see how that goes. But has there been any, um, whether it's like, do you, if you're, if you're at that point where you're like, I want right. to try this, or I want to try like this talking over thing, or I want right, to try this right. new editing cut. Is there kind of like a YouTube channel or a set of books or kind of like a site or a person that you like to look for, look to for that kind of like inspiration mm. or, or right. teaching? Yeah. teaching like, do them? I look at other mm -hmm. like food related? Well, it doesn't even have to be food, right? Like exactly. I, so like I look at other people that are not related to food sure, as well sure. to kind of change it up mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so it doesn't become stale. But there's no kind of like specific person that comes to mind that's been or a because uh, there's know, like some one that's food related. I mm -hmm. would say is I like his editing, which is um, French guy cooking. Yeah, mm -hmm. I like him a lot. He's very Casey Neistat. Yeah, right? and Casey Neistat. Yeah, and Same. Peter McKinnon. Yeah, and mm -hmm. all those guys. Totally, totally. They're great. But then when like you see them do something, do you find a tutorial or like? Uh, have you taken like Skillshare classes? Because mm -mm. that's also like a big, you can learn all Final Cut Pro editing mm -hmm. on Skillshare. It's insane. But yeah, it's really usually great. if I want to figure something out on Final Cut, I'll just Google it. Mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. This shortcut for this or whatever. Has there been any uh, crossover with like your cooking experience with video editing that you like? Any principles that you have kind of, you've seen crossover with both? Mm. Yeah, I guess. The same thing as in like you're, say you're julienning a bunch of carrots, you're gonna like peel all the carrots first. At the same then, time. So I, I guess you could say that with footage, mm -hmm. you get it all first and put it in its each own sure. library. Sure, sure. You know, there's like a certain flow that's the same as cooking, mm -hmm. editing, mm -hmm. you get like in your workflow, mm -hmm. you know? I like it because you get that like immediate feedback, right? Yeah. Like you make a cut and then you can play it back and see what it yeah. looks like, you know? Like you season something and you can taste it and see right away like, oh my God, mm -hmm. that's totally right there. I go, that's good or that's shitty. Yeah, yeah more exactly. This, take exactly. It out. Looking more to like the future, what are some kind of ambitions that you have for yourself with food and media? Do you want to keep doing pop-ups? Do you want to have your own space? Do you want to... Mm -hmm be media only right like where where's your head at with the future so my main goal for this you know the short future mm -hmm. is to just do the media mm -hmm. just like have my youtube channel and that's it right 
um, mm -hmm. just like you know people I know doing it. Sure. And then from there, you know, maybe have a studio mm -hmm. or do pop up dinners from there, mm -hmm. whatever. So mainly, I just want to solely do the video. And when you say doing pop ups, does that mean solely in Seattle, or do you want no anywhere, uh, anywhere yeah. you want? Yeah. Same. That's why we get along. <laughs> Uh, what can chefs be doing better to help this next generation? Oh, I would say they, oh, like the chef I had, he was a good mentor to me. He just, he was just a good coach. So I guess what they can do is just be a good coach, you know, mm -hmm. like, you know, I, I haven't had any like screaming chefs or anything mm -hmm. like that. I can imagine that's not very helpful. Right. Um, yeah, you just need a good mentor to be there to like let you know what's right, what's wrong. Um, yeah, I, I don't really have anything to say about that really. Because mm -hmm. that, that question for me comes from the complaint that quote unquote good cooks are really hard to find mm -hmm. and it's so hard it's to... all yeah it really comes down to what you teach them mm -hmm. you know so mm -hmm. you just have to be a good coach right yeah okay that's a good answer i'm gonna hit you with some rapid fire questions what is the best meal you've had in recent memory uh last night we had a uh, we had good ramen where I did you make it the fucking place uh what was the name of the place that's utensil Betsy Tenjin. Te Where's that? Betsy Tenjin. Be oh, that's right here. That's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That it feels good... like you walked off the street of Tokyo when you're in that place. Yeah, it's it was that, like, like a little a little thing. Japanese TV on the on That the was thing. really good. Um, you know, the burgers at McDonald's are really good right now. Interesting. Because the, the they're new, right? Yeah, the double quarter pounder. I, I had one good. of those yesterday. Literally had one of those yesterday. Super good, dude. It's I mean, good, that's right? comfort food for me. I like it. Because my I didn't grow up with my parents cooking at mm -hmm. all. Uh, so like me and my buddies in high school, we were just goofing around with going mm. to McDonald's. Yeah, it's And that's what I would delicious. order. It's totally true. It's a Saturday morning on your first day off after a work week. And you're, it doesn't have to be a Saturday, but you know what I mean. And yeah. you're standing in front of your kitchen. How do you make your eggs? Mm. Uh, we just did that. I just did uh, like just chorizo, refried beans, the eggs. Interesting. Put it in a tortilla. And that's, would it change if you made it for her? Or do you guys both no. like it the same way? No, she likes it. Yeah. Okay. Um, it all depends. Sunny, scrambled, whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're not picky with eggs. Yeah, sometimes you can ladle it into the pan and then put the tortilla right on top of it so it cooks Whoa. on the tortilla and it's like a layer. And then you flip egg. it out? Yeah. Interesting. Do you roll it after or you just eat it kind of like as a... No, you just put your stuff in there like your Got chorizo it. fried yeah, yeah, beans. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Name an ingredient you're obsessed with right now. Sumac. Got it. I'm always obsessed with sumac. <laughs> yeah. What do you, what's your, like. We actually found some when we were hiking in SoCal. Interesting. Yeah. And how do you use it? What's your favorite way to use it? Uh, I love using it on fruit. Mm -hmm. Sumac on watermelon, usually add some Aleppo or Espelette. Yep. Lime salt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What is, is, is there, or what is the cookbook that you've gifted most or are most likely to recommend to people? I would say... Harold McGee, yeah, on, on food, food and cooking. cooking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, so much like learning the why. Actually, right? no. Also, uh, Rick Bayless is really yeah, authentic Mexican. Okay, that one's like my one of my bibles. I have to check that out. Mm -hmm. You um, can open a Mexican restaurant with that book, I think. There's a lot of uh, is it because he's very much so on the history side of things too. Is there a lot of history or it's yeah? He, or? He'll actually send his cooks to Mexico every mm -hmm. year. Some R and D, but in the book, it's a lot of stories or there's recipes or it's like a yeah combo. it talks about like mm -hmm. where he discovered this and all that shit mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. i mean mainly the recipes are great right name a technique that you're still intimidated by in the kitchen mm. you know something that i always wanted to do and i just recently did mm -hmm. i was sort of intimidated was grinding my own masa got it that was really rad mm -hmm. so not anymore, because I just did it, but I was. It was really cool, you know, grinding it from the fresh yep. corn yep. with that huge grinder. Mm -hmm. um, 
Yeah, that was really cool. What just did you make out of it after? Tortillas? Tortillas, yeah. yeah, yeah. Just like having a fresh tortilla yep. from that freshly ground masa. It's, it's crazy. It's so good. How much is one of those machines? Is it expensive? Oh, shit. It's so expensive. I think you get one for twelve hundred. Really? A small, like, I mean that's I mean if you're gonna open a countertop it. one, but the one over there is like sure. the size of this table. <laughs> so it's insane. That's it has like these two circle stones. Yeah, and it that like just, pushes. Yeah. yeah it gets really hot, you gotta keep it cool. Um, it'd be cool to make like a, I mean not make, but like find a way to get like a portable one that you could just roll around in a case and bring to a pop-up. Mm, yeah. That would be a cool idea. I was thinking of getting one of those, um, those rolling, uh, oh, uh, tortilla presses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen, uh, who's, who's Rosio, that? Rosio Sanchez in Copenhagen. She, she, oh, makes yeah. her, she makes her tortillas like that. I saw that. Um, I saw on some food truck in LA, but the ones I've been seeing online, it's like 300 bucks, but mm -hmm. those, it says not to go with those because like the aluminum paint comes off onto the masa. No, so ones you. you have to get yeah. are like $1,200. Don't do that. Um, you somehow get a call right after this interview that you just want an all expenses paid trip to eat at your dream restaurant. And when you get there, there's someone that you've always wanted to talk to waiting to have dinner with you. Where is that restaurant and who is that person? Oh, that would be tight. Um, <laughs> shoot, uh, it would either be Noma or it would be Peugeot. Okay. One of those. And who would be, who would you eat dinner with? Would, living or dead? Oh, live, oh shit. It can be whoever you want. Living or dead? Huh? Yeah, yeah. Hmm. That's a tough one. <laughs> shit. Can wait. Have you ever answered this one? Um, I have a couple places that are like really high on my list. But it would probably be someone from my family. It would probably mm -hmm. be, I would probably go back in time and hang out with someone in India. Because mm -hmm. that's a side that I, I personally feel like I haven't explored enough yet. Mm -hmm. So that's the only thing that I'm craving right now is like more of that kind of. Um, but I've had uh, like people have answered football coaches and Harry Houdini and you know like all all sort like other chefs like all sorts of people have been answers um hmm. you know someone that you like admire or probably look up cool to. like john coltrane yeah that'd be really cool yep i was gonna think that you were gonna say someone music related um what is an ideal day in the life for you hmm just wake up have a cup of coffee go to the gym that's it cook cook a little bit yeah yeah, I mean, what more could you ask for? Where can people find you online and get in touch? Uh, they can find me at a cook named Matt. Nice. That's it. It's That's a cook named Matt everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. Instagram, YouTube. Yeah. Um, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook. Yeah. Um, Is there a place that you I have like... a musically? Nice. <laughs> anymore. No lip syncing. No. It's a cook named Matt everywhere. Is is there a place that you'd uh, prefer people to go check out like right after this interview if they want to see more of your stuff? Uh, yeah, mainly on Instagram and YouTube. Got it. Those are my two main ones. Got it. There you have it. I really hope you enjoyed that conversation that I had with Matt. I certainly learned a little bit more about him personally that I didn't know. But let's get into some more macro takeaways, shall we? Number one, cooking food that you're excited about. It is something that I've personally seen time and time again kind of suck the life out of chefs. And it's so important, right? The dude just loves Mexican food. So why not cook more of that? He's taking inspiration from other chefs as well, though, and infusing that into what he's doing. And it's he's just doing fun one night only dinner. And that's how like the Mexican dim sum style pop-ups came about. Another takeaway for me was his uh, just do it advice with content. You could hopefully tell in the interview that I was trying to like get a deeper answer out of him. But upon listening to that answer when I was editing the podcast and thinking about it and thinking about the advice that I would personally give, that's really the punchline. If the question is, how do I start making videos of my food? make videos of your food, right? Like we all know people in our lives that say, I should be doing X, Y, and Z, or I'm gonna start ABC idea. And whether it's excuses or lack of priorities or whatever, that not doing is holding so many people back. And the mentality of I'm just gonna do this and then along the way find ways to improve seems so like, duh, when you say it out loud, but it's ultimately the reason for so many people's successes, not just Matt's. And I'm really glad that he brought that up and gave that as an answer. Lastly, as far as 
takeaways go, I want to talk about delegation. So we touched on it briefly in the interview, but I think it's so important to have that conversation with yourself, not in the, oh, this is how my chef did it, so this is how I'm going to do it. But when it comes time to ask for help or bring people on, ask yourself, what does that ideal day look like for me? as the owner or the the person, the face of the thing? And where's my time best spent? And whatever's left on the table, that's what you give away first, right? It's not saying I can do that. I, I should, so I should be doing that. It's what's your thing? Perry, cherry pick the activities and responsibilities that you do best and everything else can be delegated so that you can have a full-time job and do social media and do pop-ups like Matt does. If you're listening to these takeaways on IGTV, I would encourage you to check out the full episode wherever you enjoy podcasts. If this is the end of the show for you, I would encourage you to check out Matt's stuff next and show him some love. If you have other industry folks that you would like to see me interview on the Emulsion Podcast, shoot them to me on Twitter, tag them if you really want to be savage. I'm at Justin underscore Kana over there, so you can include me as well, and I will see what I can do. I'm really, uh, I, I, I enjoy these interview episodes a lot, and it's networking for me. It's access for you. I, I, I it's, it's just a win-win, so I'm really enjoying it. If you have any suggestions or people that you're like, I'd really love to see a conversation between Justin and this person, shoot them to me, and we'll see what I can, I'll see what I can do. So as, as, as per usual, thank you so much for your attention. My name is Justin Kana, and I really hope you have a good one. Thanks for listening to the Emulsion Podcast. I appreciate your ears more than you know. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help sponsor the show, head on over to patreon.com slash Justin Kana. Other ways you can help out right now include giving this show a review on iTunes so more people can find it. I also love seeing you folks liking and commenting on the video if you listen that way, or even just share this episode with a friend. Now is normally why I would tell you that my name is Justin Kana, and I hope you have a good one, but you've probably got another podcast episode to listen to, so I'm just gonna get out of the out of the way here excuse excuse me